Hey, my friend. I thought today we might take a little photographic trip together to an old airplane graveyard. The perfect place full of perfect subjects, all begging to relive their glory days and get in on a little of that sweet black and white film photography action. But not just any old black and white film is gonna do here. Oh no, not today. Because today, we're photographing history. And these planes have all paid their dues, battling it out in order to keep our skies safe and our pilots employed, which is why they deserve only the best. So I felt it was time to whip out my all-time favorite black and white film stock, Ilford HP5, in order to show you what kind of look, feel, and vibe you can squeeze out of this bad boy, or bad girl, when you push it two stops. The coolest thing to happen since, well, since pushing HP5 one stop. For those not familiar, to push film means to underexpose it when shooting. Oh, you are way underexposing that image, man. Then overcompensate during development. Don't worry, I'm pushing it. So you intentionally underexpose your image when you're taking it by exposing the film to way less light than you think you should, but then cranking up those chemicals during the development process by developing your film in a hotter bath or for a longer time or a combination of both of those things. When you push HP5 two stops, you're basically asking it to perform at 1600 ISO, four times its normal box speed of 400, a perfect recipe for grainy, contrasty shots that'll have your followers pounding that like button into submission. But enough tell, let's show. And begin our photo walk with a few quick picks to warm up the old shutter finger by getting a few shots of this bad boy right here, the McDonald CF-101 Voodoo. Not to be confused with the McDonald's voodoo doll looking McNugget buddies that continue to haunt my dreams to this day. Now, I'm no expert on old airplanes, so I'll spare you from suffering through a lengthy monologue on the features and missions and qualities of this fine looking bird, and simply share with you what little I do know, which is that this is an airplane that once flew in the sky, but now no longer does. Lucky for us, this also makes it a whole lot easier to photograph. Hang on, just gotta check my shutter speed, adjust my aperture, dial in my focus, and they're gone. Now, these first few shots aren't really anything too special, and unless you really like airplanes, they're quickly forgettable. But that's okay, because the best is yet to come, and a bit of a cliffhanger here, but it was towards the end of this little outing that I actually managed to snap one of my favorite pictures of all time. But more on that later. So next up, the buffalo, not the animal, the airplane. Full name, the de Havilland DHC-5 Buffalo, a Canadian search and rescue workhorse, or work buffalo. Designed for use under all weather conditions in areas where short, rough, unprepared landing strips provided the only takeoff and landing services available, the buff, at least according to this handy info I downloaded off the interwebs, features exceptionally low, slow flying controllability, and also gives us another decent subject to push our film just a little bit. But I wasn't loving the lighting here on this side of things, so I figured it was time to head deeper into the heart of darkness in order to capture the demon. Canadair CL-28 Argus Mark I, the beast of the ball that flew from 1968 to 1981 and holds the Canadian military record for the longest unrefueled flight when it flew over 31 hours. Talk about jet lag. Actually, forget jet lag. Let's talk about pushing film a bit more, as I've got my second favorite shot of the trip coming up in just a second. And there it is. The second best example I'm gonna share with you today of HP5 push two stops in all its grainy glory and gives us pretty much exactly what we're looking for, like enhanced contrast, blacker blacks, whiter whites, and clear definition between the two. And how about that amplified grain? Well, congratulations. Your photos now have more grain than a wheat field. But remember, it's not just grain, it's atmosphere. As for highlight retention, don't worry. Amidst all this drama, your highlights won't get lost. They're tough cookies. They stick around, adding more to the chaos. Uh, I mean, beauty.
See, when it comes to pushing film, you can do it with pretty much any color negative or black and white film, but there's just something special about HP5 and the kind of images you're able to get out of it using this technique. Known for its fine-ish grain and wide exposure latitude, HP5 is adored by everyone, from your friendly neighborhood hipster to the grizzled veteran photojournalist who's seen more war zones than these planes can understand. But why push your film in the first place, you may be asking? Well, good question, my friend, good question. And the answer is to make your photos moody and dramatic, of course, or to take advantage of low light situations or any other time you need a faster film and all you've got left is that one last trusty roll of HP5 or just cause you want to, which that's good enough for me. Now, full disclosure here, a younger, less experienced and more stupid faced version of myself used to think that I didn't need to push my film in order to get my desired result as all I had to do was just crank up the contrast in post. Well, I now know just how foolish that belief was as anyone who has ever pushed film before knows there is a very different look from increasing contrast digitally in post and chemically through the development process. I'll give you the step-by-step -step details and exactly how to push your film in just a minute. But first, I've got a few shots to share with you of the mighty Sikorsky CH-124 Sea King. I don't know who comes up with these names, but they seem to be getting longer and more ridiculous as we go. The Sea King, as we're just gonna call it from now on, was initially acquired as an anti-submarine helicopter for Canadian ships, but over the years, submarine hunting became less of a priority, and so it was adapted to other, more pacifist roles, like search and rescue and disaster relief. Yep, that all, uh, all sounds right. Also, fun fact, the Sea King has a fold-up rotor and tail, so it can fit inside the small hangars aboard Canadian ships, making it part transformer, part terrifying anti-gravity flying machine. This shot here is another good example, I feel, of pushing HP5 two stops and the kind of look and feel you can get out of it. So if you wanna shake things up a bit in order to crank out some high contrast works of art, then here's a step-by-step -step guide to pushing Ilford HP5 plus two stops. Step one, load your film. Same old, same old. Just remember this is the only straightforward step in this entire process. Step two, set your ISO. Here's where the fun starts. Instead of setting your camera at the film's box speed of 400, set it to 1600. No, you're not trying to trick your camera, you're giving it a reality check. Step three, capture your masterpiece. Shoot just like you always do. Just remember to play it cool when people ask why your ISO is set to 1600 on a sunny day. Step four, develop your film. This is where you overcompensate for your underexposing your film earlier give it more time in the developer. Now, if you happen to want to try to do this at home, which I highly recommend at some point in your photographic journey, then all you need to do is adjust your development times based on the guidelines provided by whatever developing solution you happen to be using. For example, I'm a big fan of Cinestill's DF96 black and white monobath, not sponsored that shows the normal options for temperature and agitation, as well as options for pushing it two stops. Or you can just tell your lab to push it two stops and they'll know what you mean. After that, the light was getting brighter and I knew my time was limited, so I snapped a couple of the Aurora, the Lockheed CP-140 Aurora to be exact, a plane I actually flew before. Not because I was ever in the military, but because back when I used to be a pilot, I got to job shadow for a bit and getting to pilot one of these low level over the ocean circling around a couple ships was just one of the perks of the job. Then a few artistic, let's just say, shots of the engine of this Canuck before finally setting my sights on the Douglas DC-3. Arguably one of the most successful aircraft ever built. The DC-3 was used all over the world for all kinds of different things, which is why you'll also heard it referred to as not just the DC-3, but also a C-47, a C-53, or R-4D, depending on where it was flown. A long time ago, I got to pilot one of these bad boys on a trip from Resolute Bay to Eureka in the high Canadian Arctic. And it was easily one of the craziest experiences of my entire life, which is why I was keen to get a photo that not only encapsulated that memory, but also all of the memories of all of the things that this plane had seen before.
Now, this first shot was okay, but I don't know. I knew the second I pressed the shutter that something was missing. So I stepped back, reframed things, and took this one. At least in my opinion, a portfolio worthy piece that I just all around love. Partly due to the subject, partly due to the photographer and being willing to spend just a few extra minutes to find that best angle, but mostly due to the film and that iconic pushed HP5 look that digital just can't touch. And speaking of iconic black and white films, another one to pay attention to is Kodak Triax 400, which is exactly why I've linked up a video right here that I think you're really gonna like. So make sure to tap or click that now and I'll see you in there in just a second.